I am uh, Congressman Darren LaHood, uh, the chair of the Work and Welfare Subcommittee, and I want to welcome everybody uh, to this um, Work and Welfare Subcommittee hearing today in the city of Chicago, and so proud to have uh, the members of the Ways and Means Committee here today for this important hearing. Uh, before we begin, uh, let me just acknowledge uh, Pastor Phil uh, and the folks here at Pacific Garden Mission for the work they've done to make this hearing come about. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, a lot of work went into putting this together, and uh, so we're thrilled uh, to have a wonderful venue to have our hearing today. And it's not often that we get um, 10 members of Congress outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, to come out uh, to uh, Chicago. But today's field hearing is reflective of that in a bipartisan way uh, to have members of the Ways and Means Committee here and specifically the Work and Welfare Subcommittee. I also want to acknowledge um, uh, Congressman Danny Davis. We're in his district here. Uh, it, yes. Yay. And for him to welcome us here. Um, I, I'm proud to represent the 16th District of Illinois, which is a little uh, south and, and west of here. Uh, my home is Peoria. I also represent Bloomington Normal and the city of Rockford. Uh, and then I extend out into DeKalb County, McHenry County, and Grundy County. And so it's an honor and privilege to represent the constituents of the 16th District and to be here today uh, for this important hearing. Um, so uh, we, we, Congressman Davis and I, work on the Work and Welfare Subcommittee, which has responsibility of overseeing several important federal anti-poverty programs that provide assistance to vulnerable children and families. And we're very lucky, obviously, to be here today uh, at Pacific Garden Mission and to, to see the work here to uplift and restore the lives of homeless individuals and families in, here in Chicago. Yesterday, we had the opportunity to visit Project Hood from, and Pastor Corey Brooks. We did a field, a site uh, hearing or a site visit yesterday uh, at, in um, Inglewood, and we learned about the important work that Pastor Brooks and his team are doing to uplift and transform lives in Inglewood and Woodlawn, including building a new community center there. One of the things that has stood out to me about both of these organizations is their philosophy of uplifting. Uh, and equipping individuals in crisis with skills and tools to find stability and transform their lives through faith and work. How do we define help matters? Whether it's through churches, nonprofits, private foundations, or government programs, when providing relief and assistance to those in need, we should be exploring every possibility to promote work as, a, as the surest pathway out of poverty. No amount of handouts or government assistance, no matter how well-intentioned, can substitute for the intangible benefits and dignity that work brings to individuals and their families and the ripple effect it has on our communities. All of our government programs need to be oriented to provide every opportunity for individuals to grow their capacity and be connected to meaningful work. At the most fundamental level, work provides income and greatly reduces the likelihood of being in poverty. Simply working, even part-time, dramatically reduces the chances <coughs> excuse me, of living below the poverty line. In 2021, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that only 4.1 of individuals <coughs> who worked part-time over a period of at least 27 weeks had incomes below the poverty line, and only 2.6 of those who worked full-time. Beyond providing a reliable source of income, work also provides countless intangible benefits to individuals. Research has shown that work is associated with improved physical and mental health, social well-being, and higher degrees of human connectedness and social capital. Conversely, studies have linked joblessness with increased social isolation, depression, anxiety, and feelings of hopelessness. Joblessness can even affect physical health. One study found that unemployment lasting longer than six months can reduce life expectancy by as much as a year and a half for a 40-year-old worker. Tying federal benefits to the expectation of work is not punishment. Work in exchange for benefits represents society's commitment to helping individuals and families in crisis. In fact, most Americans support work as a condition of welfare. A 2023 Axios poll found nearly two-thirds of Americans, including half 
of Democrats support work requirements for welfare programs. As part of this committee's ongoing efforts to restore work requirements to federal programs in 2023, we secured, we secured a major victory by strengthening work requirements for families receiving temporary assistance for needy families, known as TANF, cash assistance, as part of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. The bipartisan law closed loopholes to hold states accountable for engaging TANF work eligible individuals in work and establish pilot programs to measure recipient employment and earnings outcomes to test alternative measures of performance. But more can be done. Conducting these field hearings like we're doing today gives us an opportunity to hear directly from people who have overcome the odds to escape poverty and the organizations and leaders that do the hard work every day to help individuals transform their lives. And we'll hear from some of those remarkable individuals today as our witnesses. I want to again thank our witnesses for being here today and for the Pacific Garden Mission, and I look forward to the testimony we'll hear. 